The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. We're here at Maker Faire in San Mateo, and my cell phone battery is dying. Luckily, there's a lot of technology around us, so I've made a list for a scavenger hunt. I'm going to get the parts to make a solar-powered phone charger that I can stick on a hat. Let's get started. Let's take a closer look at the scavenger hunt list. These are the things I need to find here at Maker Faire in order to build a solar powered hat charger. Of course, we're gonna need some solar cells. I'm not sure how many though. A boost circuit, this will take a low voltage such as three volts and boost it up to five, which we would need in order to charge the phone. However, if our voltage is higher than five volts, we might need a regulator to knock it down to five volts. Passives, that just means things like capacitors, resistors, diodes. A USB cable or port, probably gonna wire it right into the circuit, so I don't wanna hack up the phone charger that I have with me. We'll just have to find another one. Wire, obviously, to connect things together. And finally, solder. We brought a USB soldering iron with us, but we don't have any solder. I hope we can find some. Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. We found an exploratorium booth. It looks like they might have a few things here that we need for our scavenger hunt. All right, let's see. I like this color. So how about a hat and some chains for the vending machine? Well, there's one part at least. A vending machine full of parts. This looks useful. It's a pinnacle of technology, a vending machine that actually takes money. All right, uh, alligator leads could be useful. C1, hey, hey, look at that. All right, uh, salvage switch. D6. Yeah. Chris Parker, you said you saw some solar cells? They have a flexible solar panel here at the Seed Studio booth, but unfortunately it's not for sale. Adrian here says he might have a USB cable for charging? Oh, I do. As a matter of fact, I do. All awesome. our launch pads come with USB cables. Launch pad, that's the MSP430 based TI microcontroller development board. You got it. As well as our arm based ones as well. We've got a growing ecosystem of launch pads. We found a soldering station here at the TI booth. So once we find all our parts, this could be the spot where we build it. We're here at the Maker Shed, which is the retail area of Maker Fair. There's a lot of stuff in here to buy. I bet we can find a few of our parts in this very building. This is pretty much what we're looking for. It's a solar panel that charges things, but it doesn't involve a hat. This might be a little too easy, but we can always get the solar cells from it. So I'll think about it. This kit has some solar cells in it, so we might have to get this. Hey look, a How To Galileo book. We might need this for a future episode. Here's some solar panels. A little grasshopper that moves around. Yeah, they're fairly cheap too, so this might be an economical solution. I'm gonna go for uh, three of these grasshoppers. I can either get five volts or maybe hook the cells in parallel and get higher amperage. I also bought this other stuff, which is completely unrelated. Let's take a look at this grasshopper thing. Solar cell is really small. We got a hot tip from Parker. He says there's a guy with solar cells in the homegrown pavilion. Let's check it out. Christian Peterson here has some DIY laminated solar cells, and he's gonna hook us up with some. Thanks. I totally paid for it, you know, beforehand. Uh, but <laughs> I think this will work better because we can basically make the hat look like whatever we want, and we have enough cells to get the power we need. Okay, you got solar cells, you got the boost, you don't need the regulator. Looks like we have everything we need in order to make the hat, but we need some hot glue in order to assemble it. Let's go into the craft section and see if we can find some. Crap, we need another stick. Stick, stick. I 
able to reinforce this plastic and sticky art lab. Now let's try to attach some solar cells to it. Got this Minty Boost kit. Takes a low voltage and boosts it to something that'll charge your phone. So normally this would be like a 3.7 volt battery, but in this case, we're going to boost a solar voltage up to five volts for phone charging. And I don't have any instructions. That's not good. We brought this portable USB soldering iron along as well. Let's see if it works. This soldering iron draws one amp at five volts over USB. Therefore, it only gives us about five watts of power. But that's just enough to make this work. 15 to 25 would be preferred. It takes longer to heat the parts for the solder to melt with a small iron. Now it's time for a tech timeout. We're here at Tech Shop in downtown San Francisco and Mel here is gonna give us a tour. Hey everybody. Here have your, you have your industrial machine shop. You have your manual mill. These are the tools that made the industrial revolution happen. It's important, you know, nowadays people don't realize how things are made anymore. They've Absolutely. forgotten. Uh, and it becomes magic to them. You know, it's like one of those science fiction stories where it's like a million years in the future and nobody knows how anything works. Exactly, anymore. exactly. And what's, and what's funny is um, I've spent some time in our Detroit location where you have these really old manufacturing car guys Guys, right and um, you know we're right now we're losing a lot of our manufacturing information so this mm -hmm. is a great way for people to get back into how to make things because once you know how to make something you actually think differently yeah about being creative it also increases your just cognitive you know thinking right. skills. what we try and do with our equipment is cover about 90% of what people need uh, and let them play here you have basically all the tool, the sheet metal tools you need to make everything from satellites to car bodies uh, to samurai armor so here we are in a fully functioning wood shop. Let me show you the shop. This is a game changing machine, honestly. It's a giant CNC wood router. It's got a four by eight cut bed. So basically you can take the front door off your house and cut yourself a new front door out of it, right? Yep. Uh, and you can see that it's actually doing, you know, organic 3D machining right now. It's cutting kind of a bowl shape out of some wood. Now we'll go upstairs to kind of the think tank of Tech Shop San Francisco location. So to me, this is the most important part of the, stop, of the shop. This is kind of the heart of the shop right here. Uh, it is these tables right here. The community is worth, the, the social capital is exponentially more valuable than the machines, you know. So this is a plastic injection molding machine. Uh, this is actually the exact machine that uh, at our original location, the Square credit card reader prototypes were made. Uh, so it's a very, very cool machine. Tech Shop is just kind of that ramp that gets people thinking manufacturing. Yep. And you have companies that fall out of us and they stay very close because they want to stay in the environment. So Mel, is it just about hardware here at Tech Shop? No, thank you for asking. Um, no, actually, so one of the great things about Tech Shop is we are in a partnership with HP and Autodesk. Even if you've never modeled in 3D before, uh, we can make it very easy. There are many members who get the membership just for, just to write emails and use our software. I would say by far the most popular machines at Tech Shop are the lasers. We can teach somebody how to use a laser within approximately two hours. So you can see that this is actually prototyped on the lasers, uh, and this is their first model. Now they make them out of a really, they have a really beautiful body, they're made out of sheet metal. Now Type A machines actually came out of this location. Well, Bell, thank you for showing us around Tech Shop and all the cool machines you have here. No problem. While I'm soldering this, I'm gonna have Parker work on the solar cells. They're very fragile. Solar cells are usually sandwiched between layers of plastic for protection. These cells are the raw material, and they're very fragile. Unfortunately, they are the only kind large enough that we could find. Parker is using copper conductive tape to attach the solar cells together into a series circuit. They are half a volt each, so we need six cells total to get three volts. The back of the cells are positive, the front is negative. Using the tape to connect them together is tricky, but I'm sure Parker can do it. In all honesty, the cheap USB soldering iron works better than one would think. 
Since it draws one amp, you wouldn't want to hook it up to a computer. Most computer USB ports are only rated for 500 milliamps or half an amp. But a phone charger or power brick is okay because these generally provide more than an amp, sometimes up to two. The solar cells are half a volt each, so we put six of them in series. It should give us three volts, which we should be able to boost up to five using the Minty Boost, and that should charge your phone in theory. So when you have a dedicated charger, there's a voltage divider on each one of the data pins on the USB line. And when the phone sees that, it's like, oh, you're a charger, not just a USB cable hooked up to a computer so I can suck more juice. However, my phone has an issue where that fast charging doesn't work, so I'll have to test it using Parker's Note 2. We tested the Minty Boost to see if it'll charge your phone with two AAs, and it does. So instead of these AAs, we're going to have the solar cells. I'm using the alligator leaded wires I found to attach the solar cell input to the Minty Boost. I wish I had more wire, but I don't. Luckily, John, our production assistant, had a pair of Leatherman cutters with a knife and snippers on it. Thanks, John. This was a real lifesaver. some stickers outside for Hackaday, so we're going to use these as tape. That's the wrong way. Thanks, Hackaday. have a multimeter, Parker, so we're going to have to do this the old-fashioned way. We need to see if we have continuity across the whole thing. So I'm going to put it to my tongue. Okay. Okay. Uh. 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 Okay, we have continuity across all of the cells. Okay. You're going to look fabulous. Parker, you're a head model. Your lifelong dream. Whatever that song is, I hate it. I'm like Grumpy Cat. Parker. Maker Fair. 
Although I should have put on a longer cord. You know, at Maker Faire, normally, normally you feel dorky like this, but at Maker Faire, you look pretty normal. That's the magic of Maker Faire. Well, we had our ups and downs with this project, namely the solar cells were very fragile and hard to find, but we did get it onto the hat and charging. So that's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, we're going to be doing a tutorial on oscilloscopes. We'll see you then. Thor that shoots out light, like lightning bolts, whatever like it is. <laughs>